Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our Build Deploy Test with Jenkins and Docker video series. And this is an advanced section and in this video we are going to talk about understanding declarative pipelines of Jenkins 2.0. Scripted pipeline syntax. We already discussed about the scripted pipeline syntax while we were working with pipeline project and we also saw how we use the script to create nodes and specify agent to perform certain tasks like building, deploying, and testing the application. So we also used the script editor to generate the script for us, and we also saw how easy it is to generate the script to perform or create the pipeline, which is pretty close to how you did with the freestyle project, but you can do the same exact same thing with the scripted pipeline syntax as well. And again, there was the script editor, which gave us the syntax for us pretty, pretty quickly. So all those magics happen for us very, very easily with the scripted pipeline. But then this new declarative pipelines of Jenkins came in. The declarative pipeline is a, a relatively recent addition to Jenkins pipeline, which present a more sophisticated or simplified and optionated syntax on top of the pipeline subsystem itself. And since declarative pipeline syntax sits on Jenkins file, they are now version control pretty much like how the rest of your application code is maintained in the source control. This is exactly what we discussed in our starting of this section that this Jenkins file is going to be something version controlled, maintained, it creates the pipeline for you automatically and you don't really have to rely on the Jenkins UI itself. So even if the Jenkins master is being destroyed, everything is going to be resurrected automatically based on the Jenkins file that you have specified within your source control repo. And before going even further with this descriptive pipeline, this pipelines in Jenkins is not all new, but still Jenkins is fundamentally an automation engine which supports a number of automation patterns. Pipelines add a powerful set of automation tools on Jenkins supporting use cases that span from simple continuous integration to comprehensive CD pipelines. By modeling a series of related tasks, user can take advantage of many features of pipeline such as coding, durable coding, possible coding, versatile executions of the CI CD and make the pipeline as extendable. And you can see that the more robust or the complex pipeline is going to look something like this, right? So this is exactly the same content that I have taken from the Jenkins.io page, uh, which is the credit for this particular uh, image. I have not created this image, basically. The image and the text that you are seeing over here in the slide are directly copy pasted from the Jenkins.io website itself, which makes more sense because I don't really have to reinvent the wheel to tell the exact same thing again and again in my own way because this text itself is oversimplified. You can see that this pipeline, as you can see, has started with an SEM commit and then it creates a repo and then it takes a repo from a specific branch and the workflow starts and then you can see that there are many different stages and each stage is going to perform different operation like checkout, launching a Docker agent on a Jenkins agent and then running a test stage to run different kinds of testing and then deploying the application and generating a build report and then the workflow ends and there will be some test report as well obviously. So this proves the point that Jenkins pipeline is even more addictive and important in terms of how the continuous integration and deployments can be done for a workflow of application. We already saw an example of the pipeline syntax of Jenkins, something like this. And we also saw the exact same thing that while we created our first repo and the first pipeline with our Blue Ocean theme, the pipeline was automatically created for us. And this exact syntax that you can see here is called as the declarative pipeline syntax. So declarative pipeline syntax is not limited to what you see in here, something like agents or stages and echo commands and write files or archive artifacts, something like that. There are even more syntax based on the plugin that you install. So let's quickly see what I really mean about these declarative pipeline syntax itself and what is this complete details are all about. So if I go to the browser, uh, over here and then if I search for uh, declarative pipeline syntax over here you can see that this is the pipeline syntax and this is the declarative pipeline. So you can see that every single pipeline starts with a pipeline block over here and then you start the insertion of the declarative pipeline codes. 
So you can see there are different sections available for the declarative pipelines. The first one, it starts with an agent, basically. So the agent can be any agent, which is going to be your Jenkins own uh, slave agent. So there are some discussion happening on the forum or the Jenkins group. Uh, if you join the Google group of Jenkins, they're talking about what do they name the slave itself, because that sounds very, very uh, not correct. So Jenkins slave master, they're going to replace that with a naming convention. So they're going to be, there is going to be some naming convention change going to happen pretty quickly. So they're going to call any more as slaves because the agent has already replaced it. So probably that concept is going to be fade away soon. So you will see new changes coming in. I'll be adding a video on that. But again, you can see that within this particular agent section, you can see there are many different options available. Something like any, it can be any agent. And then there is a none, which can be uh, none of the agent, but it's going to choose the global agent for you. And then you can label the agent and then uh, the node. Uh, we know that this node is something that you can specify within your Jenkins, which node has been attached to the particular Jenkins. And there is something called as Docker. You can also specify a Docker image, which is going to be automatically pulled for you from within Jenkins. And then you can label uh, the uh, image like LTS or latest or whatever it is. And then you can pass some arguments for running that particular image. And then you can specify the registry URL, like where the images are actually be sitting. It can be uh, sitting directly in the hub.docker.com. It can be sitting in a, your own company's Docker registry, or it can be sitting within a private repo registry. So it can be anything. So you can specify the registry URL and its credential IDs as well. And similarly, you can also run a Docker file for that matter. So you can specify, you can put a Docker file uh, within that particular uh, Docker files uh, section uh, of an agent, and then you can tell what operation they can be performing. And again, guys, there are some confusion on this Docker file versus the Docker as an agent itself. We'll be talking about that pretty quickly uh, in our upcoming videos of this uh, series, but yeah. These are the things that you can do. And you can also spin up a Kubernetes for that matter. You can specify the pod, containers, and volumes, and all those details that we already discussed in our Kubernetes for tester series. So you can also specify that the direct YAML file in triple quotes over here. So you can do all sorts of things as an agent. And similarly, you can also see based on the plugins that you have installed, you can change the stages and its steps. There is something called as the pipeline step reference. If I go over here, you can see that within the step, you can do a lot of operation. This is what I was talking about. Based on the plugin that you're actually installing, these things are going to be changed. For instance, if I'm just going to execute a PowerShell command, so I can do something like this. You can see the PowerShell uh, script. So once I click this particular thing, uh, it will tell me what kind of syntax that I need to be using for the PowerShell operation. So for the PowerShell core, we should be using PWSH. For the PowerShell 7, which is running within our Windows alone, you can specify PowerShell, something like that. So there are many different syntax. Again, guys, these are something which keep extending uh, based on the plugin that you are installing within your uh, Jenkins. And you can see that the syntax itself is spanning so long like that. So for sure, you can see that the syntax will change based on the plugin that you've actually been using. Well, as I said, let's jump into the way how we can work with the pipelines using declarative syntax in even more details. Like what are the magics that we can do within this particular pipelines, at least within the UI. And then we we'll also see how we can use within our Visual Studio code that we configured in our earlier video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go over here and then I'm just gonna do a git fetch. So this way it is gonna fetch from our master branch. Let's do a git pull. And you can see that our Jenkins file is automatically appeared here. And you can see that this is the Jenkins file uh, that we just created in our earlier video, right? This can be here just in case because we are going to be using it uh, for some reason. So I'm just going to hold this guy as it is. And now within this particular UI, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an edit operation. So within this blue ocean theme, I can also do an edit of the same build that I have just created. And over here, let's say if I want to do something like I want to do an usage of environment variable. This is something that is very, very important while we really work with uh, Jenkins. So what I'm going to do is let's say if I have something called as a Chrome driver path. 
so I'm just gonna say Chrome uh, driver uh, path something like that and then I'm just gonna specify the path where my Chrome driver is sitting something like this and this is the environment variable let's say I want to use within one of my build step or maybe over here within our test I want to actually use Chrome driver path to execute my test so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass this as an argument so I'm just gonna say a print message over here just for now I'm just gonna print the message and I'm gonna say uh, get the driver path and over here I'm just gonna specify a dollar of braces and here I'm just gonna pass the Chrome driver path which is the one which I just specified and uh, let's say I'm just gonna put this guy in the double quotes because in order to interpolate the Chrome driver path which is there in the environment variable you should pass this in a double quotes if not this is not gonna work so I'm just gonna uh, do that I'm just gonna save and I'm just gonna do a save and run I will not be surprised if this particular variable is not going to be resolved because there are some cases I have seen that sometimes it's not resolved correctly so let the execution to happen and if I go to the test uh, you can see that it still shows the Chrome driver path so as I told you before I'm not very surprised on that so let's quickly go to the Visual Studio code and that's the reason I have actually used Visual Studio code over here let's try to do once again the git fetch and I'm gonna do a git pull over here and you can see that I have actually got the changes that I have made on the UI on the Jenkins pipeline and you can see that there is this single code standing over here so this is something which is not expected I don't really need to uh, have this particular uh, single course over there and that's the reason it has happened so I'm just gonna save this guy right now and let's say if I just go to the uh, git so I have uh, renamed changed that echo value so I'm, I'm gonna say changed echo uh, message and I'm gonna do a git push so the changes are going to be taken place over there and now I'm just gonna go to my Jenkins pipeline once again and if I go to the branches over here you can see that we only have the master branch at this point of time and once I hit the execution it is going to run the pipeline for us and let's see what's going to happen and within this test this time you can see that the print message actually shows us the Chrome driver path over here so where is this actually coming from is from our environment variable that we created on the start so if I go to my Visual Studio code you can also notice that we have something called as an environment stage where it actually has the environment path as the Chrome driver path over here so this is exactly where it has resolved the Chrome driver path for us and it has printed here so you can see that basically all the declarative pipeline will have a pipeline block and within the pipeline block it will have an agent this is where the execution is going to happen within the Jenkins master itself and then there will be a series of stages and within the stages you can see because we have in this UI we have two stage within this particular uh, pipeline uh, we have this in the stages so you can see that they have automatically taken them as parallel and this is a build stage and a test stage which is these two and within this stage you have a step the steps is nothing but echo of the message that you have printed and then there is an echo of Chrome driver path that you have got from the environment variable over here and then there is one more stage which is called as a deployment stage where you're going to be deploying your application and it has a step like that so this is the power of the declarative syntax itself in Jenkins and let's quickly do some more complex operation and we'll see how we can leverage the power of declarative syntax for instance let's say if I want to do an interactive session over here so for instance if I again go to this particular editing operation and if I want to do a conditional deployment over here something like only if I say yes for doing a deployment then I can do something like and wait for an interactive input so if I select this and I can tell a message do you want to still deploy or maybe do you want to deploy and if I say an okay only then you perform a deployment if not you don't really need to deploy the application itself so this is kind of a new operation that you can do uh, so this can be coming over here something like that that's the first one and I'm gonna hit save and you will see the magic basically happen so once I hit save and run 
you can see that the execution is basically happening and you can see once it comes to the deployment it is now waiting for us to perform or proceed for an operation so once I select this particular stage it says do you want to deploy so only if I proceed it is going to perform the operation if not it's going to just abandon the operation let's say if I just want to abort this operation and if I go over here you can see that the wait for operation has been cancelled and the deployment has not happened which is nothing but the next step that we have specified which is deploying the application to the IS server has not really happened for us but now let's say if I want to go back over here once again if I just rerun a job over here you can see that it's going to ask me do you want to deploy and if I do a proceed you can see that the application has been deployed for us so this is another way that you can actually make sure that your deployment has to happen or not and you can also note here that there is something like replayed from the fourth build execution so it is also very very clear to tell us that there is no change happened basically it has been replayed from the fourth build that you have made within the Jenkins pipeline so these are cool things which are available with the recent changes of the pipelines we can also do a few more operation like even more fancy operation that we'll be talking about in our next video thank you